In our last lecture, we wrote a DTO, or a Java bean, called plant that has attributes of a plant and its getters and setters. We saw that if we try to represent the plant as a string, it comes out with a kind of funny looking text until we override a method called toString. As soon as we override this method called toString, we get something that's more human readable. So, in this lecture, we're going to continue with this, with this concept. And the reason why we took all of our attributes and put them into a class called plant is we're going to make a DAO, a data access object. And for that data access object, it's easier to deal with a bundle of data all at once than to deal with each of the individual fields. So in this lecture, we're going to look at what we want our data access object to do. We're going to create an interface that discusses our data access object. And then we are going to make a stub that just stubs out what it will do in, in, in anticipation of getting to an actual SQLite implementation. So first, we're just going to make a stub. We're also going to look at a, making a unit test. A unit test is something that will test our program to make sure that given a set of inputs, we get an expected set of outputs. So, we won't do it all in this one lecture, but that's the theme of where we're going. Create an interface, create a stub, create a unit test, and then do the SQLite. This will happen over a series of, of weeks. Now, there is a traditional concept in software development, uh, the traditional software development dilemma. Let me refocus this and get it on our screen here just one second. You see this triangle many times in software development. Time, quality, and money. Pick any two. Now I have Brandon's mobile dilemma. To me, time and money are, are interchangeable to a, to a degree. And what I did is say time, quality, and features. Pick any two. Time, quality, and features. This is very important in mobile development. You don't want to get into a scenario where you uh, put something that's not good quality out on the marketplace. The reason being, reviews will haunt you for a long time. If you look at certain mobile apps, you'll see a lot of times they wanted a lot of features very quickly and threw out a mobile app that had a lot of features very quickly. But it lacked quality. And because of that, the app store ratings are very poor. And the problem is you can't get rid of that. Once you have ratings, they're hard to get rid of. So we want to focus on quality. So I say time features and quality, pick any two, but quality must be one of the two that you pick. So then it comes down to time and features, pick one. My recommendation to you is to focus on quality, okay, and focus on time. And using a scrum approach, you can add the features as time progresses. So you can kind of get a balance of all three of these. As time moves forward, you add more features because with an iterative development approach, you're always producing a piece of software that works and is slightly better than the last piece of software that you wrote. And that is why, we, that is why we're going to work on unit tests so that we can focus on quality. So let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at making our interface. What I'm going to do under the source folder, I'm going to right click and choose new, and we're going to choose package, and we're going to continue with the theme that we had before, where our package is com.plantplaces.plantplaces14 advanced, and then we're going to say .dao com.plantplaces.plantplaces14ss advanced, and then dao. DAO is going to hold our data access objects. Uh, this is going to hold anything that is interacting with the database. Now, you might have heard an analogy before where we can compare parts of object-oriented programming to the English language. A class is a noun. A class has attributes. Uh, attributes describe the noun. Attributes are adjectives. So you can have a blue car. A car would be the class blue would describe the attribute name color. Uh, so attributes are like variables, basically, and a class is a noun. We also have verbs, and verbs are methods. What we can do when we define an interface is we can 
uh, just create a list of those verbs, a list of those methods. So here I'm going to right click and choose interface and I'm going to call this interface iPlantDAO and we simply want to list all of the methods that we want our persistence layer to perform. So I'm going to press Control M to bring focus into the editor window and now I'm going to say, well let's see, what do we want to do? We probably want to save a plant, that one will be pretty easy, maybe, maybe a public, uh, we could do void public void save plant plant like so throws exception let's go ahead and throw that in there in case there's a SQL exception or something like that we see we get a red squiggly under plant which means it can't be recognized uh, that's easy to fix control shift O will fix that quickly uh, that will organize imports now we might want to retrieve a plant so let's say public void uh, we could say fetch uh, actually, and I'm sorry, it wouldn't be void, would it? We would want to say public, uh, let's say list, plant, fetch, plant, search, plant, throws, exception. The idea here is that we would populate our search terms in this incoming implicit parameter, and we would return a list of matching plants. Here again, Control shift o will organize imports, and we'll find that list. Okay. Finally, uh, let's see, uh, save, fetch, that, you know, that should be enough for now. Uh, we could, yeah, I think that'll be enough for now. We could do something like, a, well, yeah, uh, we could do something like a selection or a, a delete, but this will keep us busy for the moment. Now, we can implement this interface several times in several different ways. We can have our stub, we can have a SQLite implementation, there are several implementations that we can have. So, what's a good idea is to thoroughly javadoc this interface, and then we don't have to javadoc or comment as much the implementing classes. We can simply refer back to the documentation in this class. So to start javadoc, I'm going to go above the public interface line. I'm going to put a slash and two asterisks and hit enter. Now I'm going to say persistence methods for a plant okay and down here we'll also java doc the save method and notice that it automatically figures out what the implicit parameter here is or i'm sorry the method parameter is here and also that it's throwing an exception so we will say save the plant passed into this method plant the plant object we wish to save and an exception uh, we're gonna say if anything goes wrong with the persistence layer okay fetch plant okay again we'll start some Java doc here we'll say fetch plants based on the selected criteria okay search plant we might say the search criteria uh, for which to search a plant. Uh, return a list of plants that match the search criteria. Criteria. Throws exception uh, if anything goes wrong in the persistence layer. Okay. Uh, let's make let's go ahead and make one more method this method we're going to do let's say we want to fetch a plant by ID so we're gonna say public plant fetch plant by ID int ID so this is if we want to pick one oops sorry in a in an interface we don't have parentheses we simply have a semicolon this is if we want to find an exact match if we want to find an exact match by unique identifier we'll say fetch the plant that has this unique ID okay a bit something like a database primary key something like that okay the unique identifier for this plant okay return the matching plant and you know what I forgot to say throws exception so we can fix that uh, and then we'll say 
at throws. See, we can just type this in manually if we wish. Throws exception if anything goes wrong in the persistence layer. Okay, there we go. So we have our interface, and I'm going to control M. And the next part now is we want to put together a unit test. Uh, now, one, one small administrative difficulty here. Uh, I'm low on disk space, and I have limited time left in this recording. So, uh, But I've cleaned up the disk space. I just have to restart the recording. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this recording and upload it. And next, what we're going to do is we're going to look at creating a unit test and fulfilling that unit test that matches this interface. Thank you.